Welcome back to part two of building a wedding cake. Now I'm going to crumb coat. So I am trimming off all of my caramelization on my cakes. This just means that when they cut into the cake, everything looks nice and the same color and even all of that jazz. You could save these trimmings to make things like cake pops, but because it's all the caramelization, I'm just going to end up throwing them away or maybe snacking on them. Since we are moving into summer here in Tucson, I am using a hybrid of uh, white chocolate ganache and my frosting um, to create a more stable, um, basically outer coat or crumb coat. So that way all of my filling stays nice and secure and this cake does not melt. Since this is a tiered cake, I'm going to go ahead and add some support. Um, this is actually going to be a double barrel cake, so I am adding a cardboard round in the middle and some parchment to keep everything from sticking. So that way when they go to cut the cake, each person gets two layers of cake and one layer of filling, and they're not cutting through of four layers. For a cake this small, you really don't have to put a round in the middle if you don't want to. It's kind of more of a preference thing. Um, I like to do this, especially if it's not going to be like a caterer cutting a cake. It's going to be someone um, like a family member. Um, this person, I believe, is having their grandma cut a cake, but she was from a bakery. But I figured to make it easy, put the round in. Anyway, this cake was filled with a cream cheese frosting, which is on the inside of that uh, buttercream ganache dam. And now I'm going to go and crumb coat with my white chocolate and uh, buttercream hybrid. This venue is going to be inside and I'm going to deliver only about an hour before the uh, ceremony slash reception. Um, so it's really not a huge risk of this cake melting. However, you never really know what can happen. And we are hitting, you know, 80, 90, 100 degree days here in Tucson. It's better safe than sorry. With a crumb coat, you don't need to go for perfect, but you should go for even. So I like to make sure that there's no large air bubbles or gaps in the frosting. So I'm just going to fill in those gaps with more frosting and then use my scraper to smooth it out. Also, intermittently, I'm going to level out the top of my cake. This just helps kind of push out all that extra frosting to the side, and then I use my scraper to smooth out the sides, which then brings that lip back up, which then I use that to scrape off again to create a nice flat top. I would say you want to do this process about three times to get a nice even top, but it really depends on how good you are. I put my red velvet cake in the fridge and now I'm going to pick up the pace here with this lemon cake. It is the exact same process except this is a lemon cake filled with a vanilla frosting instead of a cream cheese frosting. Also since this cake is a little bit more crumbly, none of these cakes were cold and so I'm going to use my piping bag to add frosting onto it instead of my um, spatula. It just helps not pull crumbs off the cake. I know crumb coats aren't going to be seen but I still like to keep them as even as possible and as neat as possible especially for a wedding cake. And once this cake is crumb coated, I'm going to put this one in the freezer because I want this cake to be absolutely solid for the next step in part three where I cover it in sprinkles. Hope you guys come back for the next part.